Christian Parenting. Hey guys, I'm excited. Before we kick off today's podcast, I'm excited to have a guest with us today. I have Jonathan Pitts here. Hey, Jonathan. Hey, Cynthia. I'm so excited that you are on the Christian Parenting Podcast Network now. Welcome to the group. Thanks for having me. Hope you guys let me stay. I'm I'm definitely perfectly imperfect, so I think I'm qualified to stay. So yes, you're also messy, which is why I why I have you here. But I wanted to just for a minute let everyone hear a quick word from you and let you tell them about the podcast. But let's just start with this. What's messy in your life right now? Yeah, so I'm a widowed dad, and I've spent the last two years of my life doing life without my wife and partner for 15 years. And I think what's messy is trying to figure out who I am post her because I've take, I spent two years taking care of my girls and focusing on them. And right now it's messy trying to figure out who I am and what that looks like. And everybody's got an expectation of me and I'm like, okay, can I be me? Yeah. <laughs> so it's just hard to figure yeah. that out. Yeah. Who am I? Right. And so that kind of leads into the second thing I was going to ask you, but you have a new podcast, like I said, with our podcast network, which is awesome. And it's called The Journey. Tell everybody about it and, and kind of why you decided to do a podcast. Yeah, The Journey uh, just came out of that season of grief um, in which I looked back and reflected, you know, um, Philippians 4, 8 says, whatever is true, right, honorable, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, or praiseworthy to think about these things. And so I'm really just reflecting back on my journey, my story, and also talking to friends that I have about theirs to try to figure out what is true, what's right, what's honorable, what's pure. Like, what are these stories within our journeys that we can look at and see God's goodness, see God's grace, and also build each other up in. So it's just me sharing my journey in hopes that somebody else might find just encouragement or inspiration for theirs. And and for those who may not know you, they should, and they need to listen to your podcast, but you lost your wife. You mentioned this earlier. You were married. Just tell us a little bit about two seconds, an overview of your sweet wife and kind of the ministry and, and then your loss. So they have a little overview of what they're listening to. Yeah. I married a girl who was, I didn't know at the time, but a giant in the faith. Her name was Winter Danielle Evans, who became Winter Danielle Pitt. She was the niece of Tony Evans. We did life and ministry together with the Evans family. And Winter would grow a brand called For Girls Like You, a magazine. She'd publish a bunch of books and she would accomplish crazy things for the kingdom um, before leaving this earth. And she left me um, after 15 years and 27 days of marriage. Me and my four girls were here. God took her home. Um, And now she's with him. And so it's been a crazy journey. I'm proud to have been her husband, grateful to have had so much time with her, but I miss her. I know you do. Okay. And so you, uh, like me, you're speaking at the perfectly imperfect digital event that Christian parenting is having. It's coming up. And I was wondering, what are you speaking about? Yeah, I'm not fully uh, pulled in yet, but it's going to be something along the lines of uh, how to parent and how to live through expectations that aren't met. You know, for me, grief is one of those things like grief is just that how you describe expectations you had that weren't met. So I lost my wife thinking I'd have her 30, 40, 50 more years. I lose her. A parent goes through a divorce. They expect they'd be married longer. Somebody loses a kid. Somebody else thinks their kid is walking with the Lord. and They're not like just talking about what does it look like to be a perfectly imperfect parent when you're journeying through things that you've lost or things that you expected to have that are now gone. All right, Jonathan Pitts, that sounds awesome. I'm excited to hear what you have for that event. I'm excited that we have so many great speakers that are coming along and everyone listening needs to go check out the journey. Jonathan's amazing. Jonathan and I have become friends just over the last couple of months working together. He even, he's full service, everyone. He even told me <laughs> my, my toddler came and popped in on a zoom and he even told me what product I need to be using on my toddler's hair. So full service over at the I journey. For, I forgot about that. That's good. That's awesome. It's awesome. All right. So they can catch up with you just real quick. It's called the journey. It's in all the usual places where you listen to podcasts. And then if they want to follow you on social, Jonathan, how do they find you? Yeah. So either uh, Pitts JR26 is my Instagram, or they can find me at, at For Girls Like You, which is the brand I still run for my wife's ministry. Um, so at For Girls Like You or Pitts JR26. All right. Everyone check out Jonathan on the journey and glad you're with us for a few minutes today, Jonathan. Good talking to you, friend. Always good to be with you, Cynthia. God bless you. This is Cynthia Yanoff, and you're listening to Pardon the Mess. Each week, we have honest discussions about the ups and downs of parenting and the lessons God is teaching us along the way. It's real, it's fun, and it's biblical. Life is messy. Don't walk the parenting road alone. All right, today we have with us Mark Batterson, and I think y'all all know how I feel about Mark Batterson's books. He has a children's book out that's called God Speaks in Whispers. And so today we're going to talk to him about all kinds of things, the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit works in our life, ways to hear the Holy Spirit better, and also how to help our kids with that. So I'm thrilled to have with us today, Mark Batterson. Here we go.
Hey, Mark, welcome back to Pardon the Mess. I love it. It's good to be back. You know, it's nice to get invited once, but when you get invited twice, that, that means we're friends. Listen, we are friends, and you are invited anytime. I, you and I talked about this a little bit before we started recording, but I have a mild obsession with your In a Pit book, and then I've been reading Wild Goose Chase. It's sitting here with me, too. And so I, I, I'm fully, uh, I've got all my batters and stuff. In fact, our Sunday school teacher, we were telling him how much we loved your book, and he just taught a whole series on it. So I might need to start getting some kickbacks at some point, okay? <laughs> I love it. Hey, that sounds good. <laughs> Well, there's so much we could talk about. It's been a, you and I talked a couple months ago, and it feels like the whole world has changed in a few months. But I read something that you wrote that I thought was so interesting. And you said that you feel like a lot of Christians are bored with their faith, kind of bored in where they are. And, and there's a reason for that. And I thought, let's just kick it out of the box right there, because that could sound maybe even a touch controversial, but, but it's not in the context you said it. But let's talk a little bit about that it, before, we, before we get very far and talk about our faith and, and what keeps us complacent, because I just think that's such a strong message you have. Well, I appreciate that. And yeah, I think, you know, it was Soren Kierkegaard who said that the root of all evil is boredom. And I remember when I first read that in seminary, I was trying it on for size and trying to figure out, well, is that true? Is that not true? But here's the conclusion I've come to. When you follow Jesus, never a dull moment. When you are living a spirit-led life, you are not going to get bored. And uh, we are living through a season right now where I have never felt more daily dependence upon the Holy Spirit. I need to be spirit-filled, spirit-led, and uh, that's the only way I'm going to get where I need to go. And the reality is this, that's the adventure. And so I, I live by this little motto, choose adventure. And when I say choose adventure, I think what I'm saying is choose Jesus. Yeah. Choose following the Holy Spirit because your life will be anything but boring. You'll start experiencing those divine appointments. You'll start experiencing even some miracles along the way. And so, yeah, I, I've, I've sat through a few boring church services. Now that, yeah. that I have experienced, <laughs> but, but listen, following Jesus is anything but. Yeah. Yeah. And so as, as we start pursuing those things that the, the Lord has for us, and like you said, it's always an adventure. And, and I, I like how you talk a lot about so often the things God calls us to end up looking like our biggest obstacles, though. Th those things get in the way of it. We think, well, it can't be because this must be a closed door. This doesn't look how it's supposed to look. If God had wanted this for me, then he would do have it X, Y, and Z. But that's just not the case. That's not been your experience and really not mine either, right? No, and we know it. We know this is true. I mean, who is the strongest person at the gym? It's the person who's lifting the most weight. They have the greatest obstacle that they are trying to get out of the way. And so the obstacle is not the enemy. The obstacle is the way that this is how God grows us. Uh, you know, it's why James said, consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds. Now, I'm not saying that we have to welcome hardship. Uh, or that we have to go out of our way to make it happen. But we all know in this world, you will have trouble. But Jesus said, take heart, I have overcome the world. And it's as we go through these experiences that we get stronger, uh, that we become more sanctified, we become more like Christ. And God has a way of redeeming even those painful moments, even the suffering, even the persecution in a way that can serve his purposes. So it ends up being for our good and his glory. And that may sound a little Pollyannish to a few people. No, that's just life. Life is going to happen one way or the other. The good news is God is with us. God is for us. God is in us. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And so I, I have so many thoughts on this, but let me start with this. I grew up in a great Christian home. I've been in church since the day, you know, I was born pretty much. I think they transferred me out of the neonatal unit straight to the church nursery. And so having grown up in a church a long time, I don't remember historically talking a ton about the Holy Spirit. 
I don't know if that's weird or not, but I don't remember there being this. I mean, I knew I understood the Trinity, but in terms of talking about the Holy Spirit actively involved in speaking into my life day in and day out and, and guiding me, I don't know if I missed that day or what was going on, but you, you talk a lot about it. Well, I mean, your whole book, Wild Goose Chase talks about letting the Holy Spirit guide you. And so can you just practically speak into people that who may be like, I used to be that are like, what does that even mean? What does it look like? What am I looking for listening to? Yeah. Well, we might've grown up in the same church or missed the (laughs) same Sunday because, you know, we read the King James when I was a kid. And so it was the Holy Ghost. Ghosts are scary. Um, You know, I, as a kid, that's, that's the last thing you want. And so I I think um, in some ways, the Holy Spirit, you know, might be that overlooked member of the Trinity. But the reality is this, um, I'll shoot straight. I have a, a theory of everything. And it's this, that the Holy Spirit is actually the more of the Holy Spirit is is actually the answer to every prayer. Well, what, what do you mean by that? Well, you could say, no, I need more love. I need more joy. I need more peace. Well, sure, we all need more of that. But what are those things? Well, those are fruit of the spirit. So love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. We need more of those things. But those things are byproducts of the Holy Spirit at work within us. And so you could say, well, I need more wisdom. Well, then we need a spirit of wisdom and revelation. And so in many ways, I think some of us are trying to live the Christian life without the help of the Holy Spirit. Well, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And so I I hope this is exciting to people that there is nothing more exciting than following Uh, the Holy Spirit, letting the Holy Spirit to do things in you and through you that you aren't capable of. And so no matter what your church or even non-church background is, I think even with this COVID crisis, there's more openness to the spiritual. There's more openness to the supernatural. And I'm just going to say this as one pastor who happens to pastor a church in the nation's capital I am seeing God activate the gifts of the spirit in a way that I haven't seen before. I think we're on the verge of God moving in a really profound and powerful way. In fact, I'm holding out for revival. I'm believing that God's kingdom is going to come in a powerful way. And despite the fear and the anxiety and even the depression I think there's a lot of substance abuse right now during this COVID season, a lot of fear, a lot of anger. Um, I understand all of that. Uh, Listen, I I believe you confront the brutal facts, but you do it with unwavering faith. And so this is a word for someone today. Don't lose faith in the end of the story. God's got this. God's got you. And uh, his kingdom is going to come. His will is going to be done. I believe that. Absolutely. I bet it's interesting, uh, like you just mentioned, pastoring in the nation's capital, we're, we're facing a pandemic. We've got the most divisive political situation I think we've seen in our lifetime, for sure. We've got an election cycle, all of this going on at once, but yet that spirit of optimism that I love about you, but just by followers of the Lord to know that he's up to something and, and, and his will will be done and the light shines in the darkness and this is our opportunity And I think that plays right into why it's so important that we're following the Holy Spirit, because there's all these divine appointments he has for us that we just can't afford to miss, right? Yeah, it's so true. Uh, God is preparing good works in advance. Uh, He began a good work, is going to carry to completion, but but it's a commission. It, It involves this relationship where we learn to take our cues from Holy Scripture and from the Holy Spirit. And when we do those two things, then then I think it's game on. Then things happen that you cannot explain in the natural. And I, I think the days of trying to live this Christian life in our own wisdom and power are past. I think this is the moment where 
we're recognizing that there's spiritual warfare happening, that we wrestle against um, powers and principalities, that we were born on a battlefield between good and evil. And I, I know for some people that sounds super spiritual or that sounds um, supernatural, but that's reality. We're seeing those forces being manifested in our culture. And I had no idea this is where our conversation would go. But Me the, neither, the Mark. Good news Me neither. Is, <laughs> <laughs> the good news is that uh, God plus one is a majority. We are here for such a time as this, for such a place as this. And so uh, this is the moment for Christ followers to stay calm and carry on. Uh, to not lose our holy confidence in God's promises. Mm, mm, mm. You write it this way in Wild Goose Chase. And so for anyone listening that's like, yeah, I, I don't know. I can't get that fired up about the whole Holy Spirit discussion. But if, if you can't get there yet still, here's how you write it that I love. You said, who might not hear about the love of God if you don't seize the opportunity to tell them? Who might be stuck in poverty, stuck in ignorance, stuck in pain if you're not there to help free them? Where might the advance of God's kingdom in the world stall out because you weren't there on the front lines? And right there is where I can get real fired up and I think sometimes we get caught in this, like, I don't know how to discern the will of God. I don't know what he has for me. I, it's so confusing. And so maybe we just end up kind of trading in the bigger things he has for us by just the getting by. What's your encouragement to someone that might kind of be walking that road? Not intentionally, but that's just kind of where we fell out on things. Well, I, I would say, first of all, all of us find ourselves at that point at, at one time or another. I mean, I'm a pastor and I get into spiritual slumps. And so there, there is an ebb and a flow to this walk with Christ. I, I just, I'm someone that just believes in long obedience in the same direction. That if you keep doing the right thing day in and day out, eventually God is going to show up and show out. Uh, and, and show off and some good things are going to happen. You're going to see some miracles happen in your life. It probably will take longer and be harder than what you hope for. But, you know, we, we overestimate what we can do in a year or two. We underestimate what God can do in 10 or 20. And I, I think that's true whether you're pastoring. I think it's especially true in your parenting, by the way. Hey guys, this is Cynthia jumping in here to tell you about something I'm super excited about. I'm going to be speaking at the online Perfectly Imperfect Christian Parenting event on October 23rd and 24th. This is a completely digital event that's designed for parents like you and me that want to set aside perfection and get the practical and spiritual help we need. I love that it's digital. You can do it at your leisure, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. But the goal is just to check perfection at the door and become the perfectly imperfect parents God has called us to. There's going to be over 40 short consumable talks from all kinds of people that love kids and love parenting. People like Jamie and Aaron Ivey, Mark Batterson, Jonathan Pitts, and even the Duck Dynasty crew. I too will be speaking and I will be talking about parenting the bigger picture, focusing on what's eternal when it's so easy to focus on what's temporary. So be sure and register for this digital Christian parenting event at mess.perfectlyimperfect.org. Again, it's mess.perfectlyimperfect.org. I'm excited for you to be a part of this with me. It's going to be a great weekend and we're going to learn lots about raising our kids for the Lord. Long obedience in the right direction. With our kids, they, uh, I mean, I think more than our generation, right? They want instant results. They want instant confirmation. They're from the day and age of cell phones. In fact, Mark, I was telling my kids the other day, we went on a road trip and we were coming back and it was like 10 hours. And I was explaining to them, we didn't have cell service for a short time of that in the mountains. And they were like, oh, no Wi-Fi. No. And I was like, you guys, I used to drive home from college 12 hours with no cell phone. Like that's how it went. Like we didn't, and I, they had no concept. It's just funny to think they want this. It's this instant gratification. Everything's at your fingertips and all that. And I think it's an interesting day to raise kids. And, and so what is, what is our best? What are you doing? Tell us about your kids a little bit, but what are you doing to teach your kids some of that long obedience the sticking with it, the following God, when you're not seeing the sure results, what are you doing in that area? Well, you know, I had a father-in-law that 
planted and pastored a church for 31 years. So I had a model for ministry and I'm trying to return that favor. You know, we're 24 years into uh, this uh pastoring this church. And so I I think you let your roots grow deep and eventually it's going to produce some fruit. I I do try to remind um, millennials and I love millennials. I mean, there's a certain volunteerism and cause orientation and hunger for and openness to things spiritual that I see in them that I, that I love, but, but let's be honest, we, we want, in a week, what took our parents a year, we want in, you know, a year, what took them 40 years. And so I try to remind them that, you know, things don't happen at the speed of light in the gospels. They happen at the speed of a seed that gets planted in the ground, good soil that has to take root and then eventually bear fruit. And so I think it's about playing the long game. And that's not easy because, um, I fall into the same trap. In fact, it, since we're confessing on this podcast, I was sure. on a plane a few days ago and I got really frustrated because we lost internet connection <laughs> on a plane going 500 miles an hour at 30,000 feet that was going to get me from one side of the country to the other in four hours flat. And I'm frustrated because my internet connection isn't great. You know, yeah. first yeah. world problem. <laughs> Uh, reality check. Okay, we we need, we probably we probably should have sent out a, a prayer chain on that one in my old days. That's what we would have done. <laughs> but okay, so you have this this book you've written with your daughter. God speaks in whispers. Love, love, love everything about it. Read the book. It's darling, awesome. Let's talk about that a second because I think that you're obviously onto something. As adults, we're talking out how do we hear the voice of God? How do we follow the Holy Spirit? But starting that early, was that kind of the thought process behind it? Was starting it early with our kids? And and what's the answer? What are we teaching them in this? What do we do? Yeah, you read my mail. Let's not wait until our kids are teens or 20s or adults. Like, in fact, kids have a unique advantage over us. One, they don't know what can't be done. Mm. So that faith becomes a little bit easier for them. And I think they also just have this holy curiosity about all of life. They notice things that as adults, we don't notice. And and maybe that's because they're knee high to a grasshopper, right? And so they see the the twigs on the ground and become fascinated with the ants that are crawling around that we have long since uh, stopped noticing. So I, I think wouldn't it be wonderful if our if our kids could learn to discern the voice of God through scripture, through prayer, through nature, through other people at three, four, five, six, seven years of age. And Mm -hmm. I say, why not? You've got the prophet Samuel who heard the voice of God at a young age, and it really set the table uh, for so many moments during his life where he was able to hear the voice of God, and it literally changed the history of a nation. It changed the destiny of a guy named Saul and a guy named David. And so why don't we start when our kids are really young? But by the way, young kids are really good at learning new languages. Well, I think that also includes the language of the spirit. Hmm. Hmm. And so practically speaking on that, what comes to my mind first is is being able to tell them the places where I know that I've heard God speak into my life. And I love that you mentioned this earlier, you know, through nature, having just come out of the mountains and and seeing all that's a far cry from Dallas in August, I might add, Mark. So it's a it's like going to heaven for a week. (laughs) But teaching them through nature, through friends, through God's word. How do we do that practically? I mean, model it in our own lives first and foremost, but what are other ways that you've done that? Well, I mean, I I have done that at times just by, hey, let's lay down in our back and look at those stars in the sky and remind them of the promises God has made to Abraham. And, and, uh, but really the heart behind this, this book, God Speaks and Whispers, is to walk kids through kind of these everyday situations where whether you're at the drinking fountain 
or up on top of a mountain or a great big blue glacier or uh, the stars in the sky. God is speaking and we just need the ears to hear what he's saying. And so I think it's just about it's almost like the radio in your car. You just turn that dial a little bit and it's amazing. You'll get different kinds of music. You'll get different kinds of talk shows. And so I feel like every page in this book is us turning the dial a little bit. And so through the words and through the pictures, helping kids understand that God is in fact speaking to them through everything that's happening around them. Yeah, that's so good. And it's it's interesting when you think even about, I, I was thinking about reading God's word and how, you know, he speaks so often through his word. And even this morning, I did one of those, again, it's all, it's all confession state with Mark Batterson. But this morning, I flipped the Bible open and did one of those like, you know what, I don't know I, where I'm going to read today. And I, I'm going to go to James. And I read James this morning. And you know, James one starts off all about the trials, right? And how we're to handle it and perseverance comes from it and all of that. Literally, You've brought it up and I, interv- I interviewed Christine Kane and that's the passage she went to. It's so interesting how God works all these different things together between people we talk to in a work context or otherwise through his word, how it all starts coming together if you can just get that awareness. And if we could teach our kids, be aware in all these circumstances of where God's going to work. Don't limit him to an hour on Sunday mornings or wherever else, right? But I mean, he's all around us speaking into us in so many unusual ways. It's all, It's just awesome. Yeah, that's so good. You know, God is present. In fact, God is omnipresent. So he's here, there, and everywhere. The only thing that's absent is our awareness of that presence. And so I feel like one of my jobs as a parent is to not just pray for my kids. Now, certainly praying for my kids is critical, but I also think it's about helping my kids learn to pray themselves and then also learn to hear that voice for themselves. And the beautiful thing is that God is big enough to be heard by each one of us and to hear each one of us. And so I think that starts when kids are very young. And I believe sometimes those bedtime story moments are sacred moments. Those are holy moments. And I know those are sometimes the days where you're you're so tired, you just feel like a quick tuck them into bed and turn off that light switch. But no, these are moments we have to steward as parents. And so something as simple as a book can be a way of really creating moments and memories that could really leave that lasting impression uh, on our kids. And so, you know, it's funny, I, I enjoyed those whimsical books like the uh, you know, the Seuss books or Goodnight Moon or A Moose and a Muffin. I, I had fun with those, but I believe books have even more potential than that, more than just fun moments. And I think that should be a part of it, but also holy moments where parents and kids can actually have a conversation that can begin to lay, lay the foundation for their relationship with God. And so, I think that's uh, the heart and uh, prayer behind this book. It's so good. And we'll link it in podcast notes and it's a beautiful book. I love that. But I will tell you, and, and Mark knows this too, as a parent of a high schooler, a middle schooler, and a four-year-old, if you can start it when they're four and start getting those little pieces in with them and talking God's word with them, I mean, that's the time to do it. Because that's not to say you miss the boat. If you haven't done it and you've got a high schooler, jump in there. But having had all of those ages at this exact moment in my life, it's easiest to knock it out when they're young, right? Yeah, absolutely. And and that's such a good and encouraging word. It's never too late. It's never too late, but uh, it's never too early either. Let's not underestimate the spiritual sensitivity of our children. I think they have an ability to hear God's voice beyond maybe what we give them credit for. And the last time I checked, I think I think Jesus said something to the effect, unless you become like a little child, you can't even enter the kingdom of heaven. And so maybe maybe as parents, we have as much to learn from our kids uh, when it comes to 
faith as our kids do uh, have to learn from us uh, as adults. Okay, before I let you go then, since we're talking all about today, we've talked about a lot, but as we're talking about just hearing God's voice, what's your favorite scripture passage where where someone heard from God or where they were moved by God? What's one of your favorite passages? Because if one of my friends shared with me hers recently, and I went back and read it, and I realized I hadn't read this passage in a long time. So I thought, I'm going to ask you that. Favorite place in the Bible where God spoke into someone's life or you spoke to them directly? Oh, there's so many moments. I love this moment where God speaks through Balaam's donkey. Come on. Uh, that's fun. Uh, if God, If God can speak through Balaam's donkey, uh, he can speak through you. Uh, but I, I immediately go to the Gospels and I think about these moments where Jesus speaks to the wind in the waves and says, peace be still. And the wind and the waves obey his voice. Or I think about him speaking to a man who was four days dead and says, Lazarus, come forth. Somehow someone who was four days dead still heard that voice. That is the power of God's voice. Listen, four uh, four words, God said, let there be light. And those four words are still creating galaxies at the edge of the universe. And so it's such a powerful voice. It's such a loving voice. And then the thing that's amazing to me is the fact that God still speaks in a whisper. He still speaks in a still small voice. And uh, by the way, I think he does it because when someone speaks in a whisper, you have to get really near to hear that voice. And so it's not just about hearing God's voice. I think it's about hearing God's heart and it's about intimacy with him. Mm, Drawing near. I love that. Mark, thanks for all that you do and for all that you write. And we are going to all get a copy of God Speaks and Whispers. I know I have it for my preschooler. What's the age range for that, basically? I mean, three three to seven or eight. Um, Yeah. But I, I bet you can get by with two to nine. So, um, but it's right in that range for for kids who are kind of pre-K, kindergarten, beginning elementary school. I think it'll be right on time. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Love talking to you as always. So fun. And can I have a little bit of fun uh, here sure. right at the very end? I don't know. What are you going to ask me or say? Can I spoiler alert and read the last couple of pages? Oh my goodness. Stop it. Yes, of course. Let's do it. Here we go. And I think this is for big kids and little kids. Above all else, know this is true, that God is singing all around you. And by the way, that's Psalm 32, 70, singing songs of deliverance all around you all the time. And then here's the very end. And what is he saying in that voice, still and small? That you, my dear, are his favorite of all. Mm, If that isn't the gospel truth of what our kids need to hear every night before bed, then I don't know what is. So thank you, Mark. Thank you. God bless. Always awesome to have Mark Batterson on the podcast. I'm grateful you're with us today. I think one of my favorite parts is where he talked about not losing faith in the end of the story. And that's a word we all need today. Don't lose faith in the end of the story. God's up to something really great. And I hope that it is revival and that we get to see it in our lifetime. All right, guys, glad you're with us today. Don't forget to sign up for the Perfectly Imperfect digital event coming up. It's mess.perfectlyimperfect.org. I know your days are busy, so as always, thank you for joining us as we pardon the mess.